Hi guys, this is Kevin from Sticks and Stones again, and today I just want to show you a couple things I'm working on for Christmas. This is uh, two pieces for somebody who has a museum and they just really like the spirit faces on logs and stuff and they wanted two big pieces and they actually brought me the wood from a tree that had sentimental value to them. Uh, I guess it was growing outside of their their building or their house, whichever one, for a long time and during the last storm it got cut down and so they let it season for a while they brought me a couple pieces and they wanted spirit faces on them. So this right here is the twins and uh, he's roughed out pretty good right now. What I wanted to do though was at least show you guys a couple little things uh, with tips. When you get a log this big, I mean this thing is, is good size, alright? I don't know how good you can see him on the the bench there but he's a he's a good size log all right and it's solid cherry and he's thick and I'm trying to get some depth in him it's taken me a while so I wanted to explain to you is when you're taking wood off in the beginning what I did was I got a, a power tool out all right don't be afraid to use power tools to get these surfaces off all right uh, that's the main thing that a lot of carvers if they're doing a video or whatever I see a lot of that and they start complaining well you're cheating if you're going to use a power tool or you know just that's that's a bunch of baloney all right because i don't know one carver that carves professionally to make their living when you have to make a lot of stuff or do big pieces all right that they're not going to use some kind of power tool to get the surface off right the, the bark off you want to get some depth there's a lot of tools out there you can surface that off get down to the carvable wood then make your carving now yes i prefer to use chisels and knives you all know that I like my hand tools because you can really get deep grooves and stuff in it but I do want to give you a couple tips uh, there's a tools out there called Lancelot there's the Lancelot right it's like a little chainsaw it's it's just a disc that goes on a regular four inch grinder four and a half inch grinder okay really rips some wood off all right I can show you what the blade looks like over here And these things here, all right. And this right here, all right, is what it looks like. All right. Now all you do it, see how it just goes on the four-inch grinder. But what I do is I take my four-inch grinder and I'll face this off and at least get the bare wood showing. Okay. Then you go to your chisels, all right, or your and your gouges and whatever you're going to use, all right. So, this is a great tool. It's this right here is what I'm talking about. All right, it's called the Lancelot. They actually make another one called the Squire. All right, that you can run them in tandem together. The Squire goes in front, and you can use two of them. It really chews up a lot of wood. So, when I make totem poles or something like that, I'll rough the wood out with this because I don't like a big chainsaw myself. Uh, I'm kind of short, I don't need to hack any legs or anything off. But you got to be careful. All right, but it's a great tool for going side to side and getting bark off really fast all right then because this is going to take you long enough to carve believe me without it you'll be sitting there all day with your chisel so it really saves a lot of time when you have to make a couple of pieces uh that are good size you know and it saves you a lot of work then you get down to here but when you start carving them with other power tools uh you can get fordhams there's a uh, dremel well, like right here if i really start going and uh I get stuff dug up a little bit, whether it's bad wood or my tools weren't sharp enough or I was rushing, whatever, all right? I go out and I would buy a Dremel, okay? Now this right here is just a sanding disc on a Dremel. And you can carve with this, but I use it to sand up stuff. Let me show you for a second, all right? But this right here is a great tool for smoothing out those areas, getting the rest of the bark off, all right? Just very light. You know, you want to clean up them fuzzies and a lot of things, it's a great tool. It gives it a, a smoother surface. And all I do, all it is is a Dremel, you can get the sanding discs with it, a couple of them, alright? And you can use that. One thing I did want to show you about this tool, is once you get down to some really decent wood, then you can actually, you got to be careful and go slow, but this sanding disc will save you a lot of time also. And you can actually get the bark off with it and go right into the wood. See how I'm extending that hair? Right? 
Now, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can literally carve with that. I might do, I did do a sanding drum Santa video, and it was, I made the whole thing with just this tool. All right, a Dremel, a flex shaft, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but a flex shaft, which attaches to the Dremel, okay, and a sanding drum, and that's it. All right, I, I have a video out there, it's on YouTube, and the whole thing's there. You can go from start to finish and just make a Santa Claus, all right, on a piece of basswood. If you use this on a basswood, it, you can literally make carvings with this tool, and then just go in with your chisels and do some detail afterwards, or your knife, you know, and a couple of, of V-tools and stuff, and gouges, and you can make uh, a lot of your carvings look like they're done in the flat plane style. All right, which really, you can really dig out some good detail. If I want to put creases on his head, for instance, or whatever, all right, on this carving, let me show you. All right. Just here. Just a couple of wrinkles. Okay, so you can really see how that really shows up. And this is hardwood, this is cherry. All right, but if you need to save a lot of time and you want to smooth out a carving, I know everybody when, when they start carving, because I went through it, you end up with all the fuzzies all over the wood and you, you just can't smooth it out the way you want. And I like a, rough, a rougher hand carved look anyway. But don't let anybody tell you it's not hand carved. You know, uh, the, the whole thing is what does it look like when it's done? You know, and you can use any tools you want and any tools you have to use, use them. Okay, because it's going to save you a lot of time, give you more experience, and let's face it, it, it time is money, all right? And if you're carving for a living, you, you need to get the uh, carving done as fast as you can because you don't want to be overcharging people. I mean, some, some carvings take weeks. I've worked on carvings for months, all right? And you can never really get your money for them. So if you want to make a lot more carvings, you want to have a lot more interesting things you could do, you can't get wood off. Pick yourself up a Dremel, a sanding drum. There are metal bits. Maybe we'll do a couple of carvings. I'm getting a lot of requests for power tools. And I'll show you. I think my uh, the best way to carve is actually to use both. You use power. Rough your, your stuff out. Get down to some good carvable wood. And then go to a couple power tools. You know, use a couple power tools uh, to do that. And then go to your hand tools. Your chisels, your gouges, you know. And, uh... All the way down to the fine detail, you know, with hand tools. You can even buy power tools that engrave. I mean, you can get some fine detail with some of them. I like to do the, I like the control of a chisel and a gouge myself, as far as detailing goes. But as far as getting wood off, you can't beat using power tools. All right? So why do these people tell you you're cheating? Don't let anybody come out and say, well, that's not hand carved. You know, just look at them and say, well, hey, you know, whatever you believe, whatever your thing is, you do. But can you make it? You know, did you make that? Can you make that? And you start getting them haters, you know. Uh, tell them to go make one. <laughs> That's all. Alright, so... Carving is about art. It's about you expressing yourself. It's about the end result. Alright? Don't let anyone tell you you're not hand carving. When you took the time to go out to sand this... Now, this is going to take me a while yet. I have a lot of work on these. This guy right here, like I said, he's got two faces. And it's very thick cherry. He's probably over... I don't know, almost 8 inches to 10 inches thick on the bottom, okay? This one right here is a little wider, and what I'm going to do here is I'm making his eyes so they look to the side. I'm going to mount a little bird on the side like he's looking at the bird, okay? What I do is I make, I'll cut out a couple pieces of wood, carve a little bird. So it says, here's a, here's a bird I'm working on. He's kind of, I'm roughing him out now, okay? Or maybe I'll just put this one on him. I don't know. And I'll paint him up and stuff and make him look like a real bird. But the bird will probably be over here. You know. I don't know if you can see that. And and he'll be looking at the bird kind of out of the corner of his eye. Wondering why he's sitting on him. You know. And here's the other one. So I don't know which one I'm going to do yet. Alright. But the bird will be mounted over there. I could even put a bird up on top of here. Like, he's, like this. And give these guys eyeballs that are staring up at the bird. Wondering what he's doing on them. Okay. So you can get creative with this stuff. Thing is, it's just a couple basic logs. And look at the neat effect you can get with those. You know. So they're going to look pretty neat. 
Uh, when they're done, what I'm going to do is use some power tools and get all the fuzzies off. I'm going to probably take a diamond bit, which are pretty cheap, and I'll go in here and, you know, it's kind of roughed up there. I'm going to smooth it over with a diamond bit. Then I can get back in here with some gouges and chisels to find the nose more. And of course, i got to put the eyes in and finish all the hair. But I'm down to the place where I could use either my chisels or power tools and really define this guy. Okay? And I think I'm going to do a couple videos for you guys doing that. We'll do one from start to finish with a big power tool, get our chisels and gouges out, go back to power tools to do some detail and chisels and, and mix it up and show you that the best of both worlds is really the best way I think to carve one of these bad boys. Okay? And uh, you can, once you can carve them, you can do them. Uh, I've carved pipes with wood spirits on them. I've carved baseball bats, like I said, rolling pins. Uh, Oh, just about anything made of wood, you know. You could put a face like this in the center of a fallen tree in your yard, and everybody that goes by your house will know there's a wood carver there, or know that they're there to want one. <laughs> okay, so that you can start your own little business. Uh, so we're going to work on some of that stuff. I'm also going to do a video after this, and I'm going to show you how to practice making these without touching a piece of wood. Okay, and it'll really help you in your knife work, hopefully. So, till later on. In the next video, which I promise will be soon. Oh, and by the way, there is one tip. Uh, people that are asking for knives, yes, I'm working on them. I'm trying to get them out as fast as I can, but I'm, I'm busy trying to finish a couple orders for Christmas. So I will get them on the site. I was hoping this week, yeah, it might might be this week now. I was hoping at the end of the weekend last week. So uh, give me